There are about a million directions we could take a conversation on wedding, reception, and ceremony decorations, but for the sake of keeping it simple, let's keep it simple. That's coming up next in week 10 of the Engagement Season bonus series here on The Wedding Planning Podcast. Hey there, it's Kara, and I'm bringing you the all-new way to plan the wedding celebration of your dreams. Welcome to the Wedding Planning Podcast, where we say no to the $72 billion wedding industry, and we say yes to a more joyful engagement season where you and your priorities are at the center of everything we do. To learn more about my next level digital wedding planning package, visit wedpodcast.com. You'll enjoy a free three-day trial, no promo code required, and I can't wait to see you there. That website again is wedpodcast.com. Ready to get started? Why, hello there, and thank you, as always, for meeting me here today for a few minutes to talk all about your wedding. Today is a really, really fun topic, reception and ceremony decor. It's a huge topic, so we have lots to break down. Now, most of us will not be hiring a full-service event designer for the ceremony and reception celebrations. If you are hiring a full-service designer, then full permission to press stop on the show right now and forward it along to them. If you're like most of us and you're looking for some easy and affordable ways to dress up your reception and or your ceremony space, then today's bonus workshop is perfect for you. You're going to hear a sneak peek of the bonus audio meeting from inside my revolutionary digital wedding planning package, The Vault. Throughout today's workshop style meeting, you'll hear me refer to other sections and other conversations and other meetings, and those are all part of the larger membership package that's open for you to explore when you visit wedpodcast.com. And hand in hand with that announcement, I have one more update before we dive in. I mentioned that this is week 10 of the engagement season bonus series that we started back in January. So with just two weeks left until we resume our regularly scheduled program, which not to worry is full of brand new episodes of the wedding planning podcast on every single wedding planning topic you could possibly imagine. So just two quick things. The first one is that the previously released bonus workshop style meetings will be expiring from the public podcast feed in the coming weeks. So right now is your chance to go back and listen to weeks one through 10. Once those shows expire, they will only be available inside the digital wedding planning package for active members. And then second quick thing to note, I am always really interested to know what topics you'd like to hear more about. And the door for new show idea submissions is always wide open. To submit new show topics, your specific questions, All you need to do is follow Wedding Planning Podcast on Instagram, one word, Wedding Planning Podcast, and send in a DM. Now, sadly, there are not enough hours in the day to send a personalized reply to every single DM that's received. However, please know that I do personally read them all and I have a running organized log of topics that's ranked in order of popularity that I pull from each week to create the new shows that are coming up in the coming weeks and months. So I can't wait to hear what's on your mind. Hop over to Instagram when you have a hands-free moment, follow Wedding Planning Podcast and send me a DM with your ideas. And with that, I hope you'll enjoy today's wedding planning workshop that's full of easy and affordable decoration ideas. There are literally endless directions that we could take a conversation on wedding decor. It is such a big topic. In the spirit of ease and simplicity, two of my favorite words ever, let's sail through three very basic points to keep in mind as you're formulating how you'll decorate your wedding ceremony and or reception space. First and foremost, where do decorations fall 
on your personal list of priorities. You'll want to refer back to your list of priorities that we created way back in section one. If decor and over the top flowers and centerpieces, if this is not something that's incredibly important to you, or if you have selected a gorgeous venue that needs nothing additional, then full permission to you to skip this section entirely. I will say before we forge ahead that decor can be very simple, it can be very simplistic and still be very beautiful without costing a ton of money. And speaking of money, as you start to imagine some decoration options, you're going to want to keep in mind what is your overall decor budget. This number should include any flowers, draping, custom lighting, table decor, archways, things for the ceremony, things for the reception space. Everything should be under this umbrella of a decor budget. Now you may have set aside or formulated a specific flower budget. That's a common thing to budget money aside for. If you have a flower budget that you put aside at the beginning of your engagement, that's just fine. I just want to make sure that at this point, when we're talking about overall decorations, you're including everything together in one lump sum to avoid any budget headaches down the road. So a common mishap, if you will, is that you budget X number of dollars for florals, for centerpieces, bouquets, etc., And then you just kind of forget that you may need to purchase draping or custom lighting, or you end up wanting an archway. And all of those little extras can add up to be a significant chunk. So just be careful as you're budgeting, again, to keep all of these items under the umbrella of decor budget. And then as we're aware of that budget and we're going to stay within it, of course, uh, the next step as you're formulating decorations is to take inventory. So before you get too carried away on Pinterest or go out and buy anything, pause. I know it's an item that is easy to get carried away with and get really, really excited about. I totally, I totally get that. Um, But before you run out and start putting pieces in place, pause and take a detailed inventory of any spaces that you want to add decorations to. And in addition to that, take inventory of specifics, such as how many tables are there? How many posts are there that you want to wrap tool around? How many sets of string lights are you really going to need? If you're hanging paper lanterns from the ceiling, you'll want actual measurements because I know it can seem like an easy thing to guesstimate or you know make a good educated guess on how many you think you'll need, but that number is almost never actually what ends up being the case. So again, as you're putting these things into place, it's very important to have specific measurements, specific inventory of what it is that you're trying to decorate. Now, if you were able to find a naturally, inherently gorgeous venue like we discussed way back in the venue meeting, then a huge congratulations to you because your work here in the decor department may be very minimal. If you're working with more of a blank space for your venue and you want to bring in some extra wow factor, here is a detailed list of things to consider. So first off, it might be helpful to do our wedding vision walkthrough exercise that we did way back in sections one and in section two, there was a repeat of that. Uh, Do that exercise specifically with just the decorations in mind. So take note of everything you see and write it down in a big decoration brainstorm just to get your ideas flowing and kind of be able to visualize and start to put into place the vision that you have in your head. Now, that's the easy part, imagining a beautiful venue and then writing down all the components of that. The more challenging part is definitely going to be deciding if that vision is realistic given your budget. And that might entail doing some research. Again, you need those measurements to be very specific about actually how much this is going to cost you at the end of the day. And then another question to consider, we touched on this before, but it bears repeating, 
how large is the actual reception and or ceremony space that you are trying to decorate. Specific measurements, specific inventory. And that includes exactly how many tables do you need centerpiece decorations for. Think about not only the guest tables that your guests will actually be seated at for a meal, but also the side tables. So you may have a gift table, a dessert table, a place card table, a table with your guest book on it, a table honoring loved ones who have passed. You may, I'll say here, you might not have any of those and that's totally fine. I'm just trying to highlight some of the things that can be forgotten until the end. And again, when these little things here and there, all of them kind of creep up at the end and you haven't pre-planned for them, it can become kind of overwhelming and it can become a significant budget chunk. So just being proactive there. And then as you're thinking about your decorations, something to consider is, can you repurpose decorations? So for example, can you transport flower arrangements or centerpieces from your ceremony to your reception so that they're doing double duty? And with that point, do be aware that oftentimes your florist will offer that as an option, but there will likely be a transportation fee to do that switching. So just keep that one very kind of obscure line item in mind as you're budgeting. And this, my friend, is the perfect time to drop one of my all time favorite wedding planning mantras, which is keep it simple. At the end of the day, your guests will not know the difference if you skip a few things here and there. Above all else, please take this to heart. A meaningful wedding is what we're going for, and a meaningful wedding does not have to cost a ton of money. And then some additional points regarding your decor. I like to keep in mind the saying, reduce, reuse, and recycle. And the good old recycling mantra applies perfectly to your wedding decorations. Here's how. So by reducing the amount of extra decorations, you're going to keep things simple and affordable. Will your guests miss a few extra floral arrangements, a personalized dance floor, expensive custom lighting dangling from the ceilings? Probably not. And I doubt that you'll regret saving hundreds or even thousands of dollars by skipping it altogether. Hey guys, this is Susan with Susan's Travel Services. We are looking to be your travel agent for your honeymoon, your destination wedding, baby moon, and beyond. We have 27 years in the business. We look to reach out and build a relationship with you. From start to finish, we want to make sure that trip that you got is the best that you can and that you'll call us for your next trip. So don't hesitate to reach out. Let us know that you heard about us from the Wedding Planning Podcast, and we're going to give you a discount off your trip. So the best way to reach out to us is to send an email to info at Susan's Travel Services.com. Now you can always text us, you can always call us, but you know us, we're always busy. So email us best. We'll get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. And make sure you mention that you heard us on Cara's Amazing Podcast. We're going to give you $50 off your final payment or $100 off your destination wedding. We wish you the best. Congratulations. We are very excited to get working with you. Have an awesome week. And then we come to reusing. Reusing decoration items from another couple is an amazing way to keep things really affordable and not to mention earth friendly, which is always something to love. There's no need to go out and buy brand new decorations when there's a huge market of pre-used wedding items that you can take full advantage of. Search for wedding items on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, or if you pop open an internet browser and do a search for wedding resale, you'll come up with hundreds of marketplaces that sell secondhand wedding items. And I will say they are secondhand, but these things have been used once. They are essentially in brand new condition. And do keep in mind if you're going this route that for large items, you'll want to keep it local so that you can do pickups versus paying really, really high shipping prices. I would recommend sticking to Craigslist and Facebook 
just to do local pickups in your area. And hey, if you have to get in the car and drive 20 miles, but that ends up saving you $1,000, that is totally worth it. And then last on that little sub list of things is recycle. Recycle your own wedding decorations by doing exactly what we just talked about and sell them to another couple. The same tips apply from our section that we just went over for listing your items for sale. And the bonus of this, I can't say enough good things about this tactic. The bonus is twofold because you saved a ton of money by buying it used from another couple and now you're getting some or maybe even all of that investment back by reselling it to another couple. And then of course, same goes, if you purchased it brand new, you can still turn around and share it with another couple and recoup some of that investment. So again, Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace are perfect places to list your gently used items for sale to another couple who's engaged in planning their wedding. And I'll say here, this is not flea market flip where we're trying to make money on things. Uh, I would suggest pricing your items fairly with a very clear comparison showing what they would cost brand new and you'll be amazed by how quickly you can offload your stock of wedding decorations. And I'll share here a personal story because I have some hands-on experience with this tactic. Uh, We use this trick with our wedding tablecloths fondue pots, silverware, and centerpiece vases. So if you'll remember to our previous meeting, I shared my DIY catering story from our wedding. Well, we had 35 fondue pots along with about 20 tablecloths and a bunch of really simple glass vases that we originally purchased from a local wholesale flower warehouse. And then we purchased silverware. Now you might be asking yourself, why on earth would you purchase tablecloths and silverware? And we did that because it was literally cheaper to buy it than it was to rent it. And that sounds unbelievable, but it's true. So we resold all of those items to other couples. And I believe a church actually bought the tablecloths to use at future events. So it went to a really, really good, good place. And we didn't recoup all of the money that we initially put into those items, but we were probably in the ballpark of 80% or so of what we originally spent. And then to bring this all to life, I'm gonna share some actual numbers. So 35 fondue pots at $40 each, that was $1,400 that we spent. 20 tablecloths that were $20 each, that was $400. 40 vases times $5, that's $200. And then we purchased 80 sets of silverware, so fork, spoon, knife, that was $230. So we spent in total $2,230 on all of those items. And after we resold them to other couples and that church I mentioned, we ended up recovering about $1,700 back. Assuming you don't personally need 35 fondue pots or 80 sets of silverware, that's a really meaningful amount of money for very minimal effort. And then to wrap this meeting up, I have a final word on decorations. I do not personally think that you need a ton of extra decor for your ceremony space. The focus during your ceremony is entirely on you and your partner. So if you're torn between decorating one space over another, I would always suggest allocating your budget to your reception space, which is where your guests are gonna spend much more time. So to put that another way, let's say your decor budget overall is $2,000. Rather than putting $1,000 towards the ceremony and $1,000 towards the reception, I would put all $2,000 towards the reception and just keep the ceremony very, very simple and streamlined and clean. The budget is going to make much more of an impact in your reception space than it would in the ceremony site, so go ahead and allocate it all into the reception. 
Like I said when we started this meeting, there are a million different directions that we could take this conversation, so this kept it brief and general. However, there are much deeper, much more specific conversations to be had about practical wedding reception and ceremony decor, flowers, do-it-yourself projects and tips, money-saving tips with decorations, and so much more. And you can find those meetings in the bonus decor section that's below. We'll talk again soon. Thank you so much for joining me this week in the 12 weeks of engagement season bonus series from the Wedding Planning Podcast. To access any worksheets, checklists, or additional activities mentioned in today's episode, visit wedpodcast.com and sign up for a free zero obligation three-day trial of my revolutionary digital wedding planning package, The Vault. Take advantage of the lowest membership price of the year when you sign up today at wedpodcast.com. I'll see you there.